In this video, we'll cover the different types of geothermal heat pump systems, along with information on where to find incentives and rebates, the efficiency compared to a regular heat pump, and the cost you might expect to pay to have one installed. The use of geothermal heat pump systems takes advantage of the Earth's relatively constant temperature beneath the surface based on location and height. The Earth maintains a ground temperature range from 45 degrees Fahrenheit, 7 degrees Celsius, to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 21 degrees Celsius. Taking advantage of this natural heat source is what gives the geothermal heat pump greater efficiencies than a standard heat pump. This source of heat is also naturally renewable, making it a great energy source. The geothermal heat pump system comes with various options on how to tap into this natural reservoir of heat. We will discuss open and closed loop systems and horizontal versus vertical systems and when to use them. The cost of a geothermal heat pump system is more than that of a typical heat pump system, but this cost is saved by possible incentives and rebates in addition to the yearly energy savings, which we'll cover shortly. In cooling mode, warm air from within the building is brought into the ground source heat pump. The heat pump's indoor coil will absorb the warm air into the cooler liquid refrigerant circulating through the coil. Absorbing the heat will cause the refrigerant to boil and turn into a gas. The refrigerant will circulate through the system and be absorbed by the cooler water circulating through the system from the underground. The heat is then absorbed by the water and circulated underground where the heat is rejected to the cooler ground. Remember, the second law of thermodynamics states that heat moves from a warmer to a cooler item. The water and refrigerant never come in contact with each other. For a complete understanding of the refrigerant cycle, see our video. In heating mode, the opposite occurs. We will always follow the heat as stated by the second law of thermodynamics. The heat in this case is provided by the ground. The cool water is circulated to the ground where it absorbs heat from the ground. This warm water then circulates into the ground source heat pump where it is absorbed into the refrigerant causing the liquid refrigerant to boil and turn into a vapor. The hot refrigerant is then circulated to the indoor coil where it comes in contact with the cooler return air from the space. The cool return air absorbs the heat from the hot refrigerant and heats the leaving supply air. Types of geothermal heat pump systems. In order to tap into the Earth's free source of energy, we'll need to run plastic tubing beneath the surface. This tubing acts as a heat exchanger between the fluid in the tubes and the ground. The tubing is configured in various patterns and depths based on available land area and the composition of the soil below ground. If there is enough ground area and the soil is good for heat transfer, then a horizontal system can be installed. If there isn't enough ground area or the soil isn't good for heat transfer, then vertical tubing is another option. These systems circulate water with antifreeze or there is the option to use a refrigerant-based system. Another option if you have a body of water nearby is to use an open or closed loop system into the body of water. We'll cover each of these now. Horizontal loop ground source heat pump. Given enough area for the tubing to achieve the heat transfer required to support the cooling and heating load of the building or home, using the horizontal loop is more feasible than drilling vertically. Horizontal loops are buried from 3 to 5 feet, 0.9 to 1.5 meters deep, and are economically feasible as long as excavation can be done without difficulty due to soil composition. The length of the loop is determined by the amount of heat transferred required or the tonnage of the heat pump. In order to determine the length of tubing required, a heating and cooling load calculation is performed on the building. Tube length can run between 500 to 600 feet, 152 to 182 meters per ton of heat pump capacity. 
This means that a four-ton system could require 2,000 to 2,400 feet, 610 to 732 meters of tubing, allowing for spacing to achieve efficient heat transfer, an approximate area from a quarter to three-quarter acre could be required for a typical sized home. Vertical loop ground source heat pumps. Using vertical loops requires less land area as the tubing is sent hundreds of feet below the surface. For commercial buildings, this could include boreholes 100 to 500 feet, 30 to 152 meters deep, spaced 20 feet apart, 6 meters, to allow for proper heat transfer. These holes can be up to 4 inches to 6 inches, 10 to 15 centimeters in diameter, and contain plastic tubing that traverses to the bottom where it makes a U-turn and comes back out of the hole where it connects to a horizontal manifold. Residential systems would require fewer bores and would most likely be 300 feet, 91 meters deep or less. Vertical loops can be used when there isn't enough land area and when greater efficiencies may be required. The Slinky Geothermal Loop Installation. This geothermal system uses coiled tubing which allows for the use of less area by increasing the heat transferability per area used. This occurs because the tubing is coiled in the trench, requiring less land area, but more tubing per linear feet. The coils are laid in a horizontal trench, three to eight feet, one to 2.4 meters deep. A combination of water and antifreeze circulate through the tubing and the heat pumps heat exchanger. DX refrigerant based geothermal ground loop. Another energy efficient option is the DX ground loop system that uses refrigerant circulating around a buried copper coil. Instead of water, refrigerant is the heat transfer medium, avoiding the additional step of transferring the heat to the refrigerant in a water-based system. This helps with the increased efficiency and greater heating capacities. This also eliminates the need for a water pump, as this is a waterless system. Another difference is that this loop is in a wide vertical hole, something like 3 feet 1 meter in diameter and 70 feet 21 meters deep. This eliminates the need for large areas of land. The soil would need to be tested to make sure it's not corrosive to the copper and if found to be corrosive then a ground loop protection method will be installed. Ponds, lakes, or water-based sources. Having a body of water near the property allows for the option of using water as the heat sink, where heat is transferred to and from the tubing, either in an open or closed loop arrangement. Closed loop systems. The tubing can be installed at the bottom of a pond on the property, if the pond is large enough, maybe a half an acre or larger depending on its depth. If close enough to a lake, this option is also available pending local authority approval. A pump circulates the water in antifreeze solution through tubing within the body of water where it rejects or absorbs heat from the geothermal heat pump. Open loop system. The difference between a closed and open loop system is that the open system uses the pond, well, or lake water to be circulated through the tubing and up to the heat pump. This raises additional concerns for environmentalists and code authorities about water depletion and groundwater contamination. The use of a well water is an option if a body of water exists under your property and the use of a horizontal ground loop doesn't work for lack of area or feasibility. Open loop systems require more maintenance than a closed loop due to the minerals and other impurities that may be in the water. Are open loop systems legal? There are laws governing the use of bodies of water for the use of any open system that will take water from the source and use it in some process before returning it back again. The legitimate concern is what happens to the quality of the water in the process. Another concern is for the wildlife or living organisms in the water that may be affected by the warmer discharge temperatures. You'll need to check with the jurisdictional authority when contemplating the use of any body of water. An alternative would be a closed loop system, which should be less stringent. Is a geothermal heat pump system worth the cost? Energy savings from the installation of a geothermal heat pump system could take anywhere from 5 to 10 years to pay back the additional investment cost above a conventional system 
according to the Department of Energy. The DOE states that an average geothermal heat pump system costs about $2,500 per ton of capacity. If a home requires a three-ton unit, then it would cost about $7,500 plus installation and drilling cost. A comparable air source heat pump system with air conditioning would cost about $4,000, but the energy costs could easily equate to the extra cost of installing a geothermal heat pump. Geothermal heat pump systems have an average 20 plus year life expectancy for the heat pump itself and 25 to 50 years for the underground infrastructure. Are there any tax rebates or incentives for geothermal heat pump systems? In 2022, tax credits were extended through 2034 for Energy Star rated geothermal systems. Check local utility companies for incentives and geothermal heat pump manufacturers for rebate. Geothermal heat pump process. One of the first things when considering the installation of a geothermal heat pump system is to engage an experienced contractor. The contractor should develop a plan for the execution of the system starting with the options on the type of geothermal systems appropriate for your site. This should include a site visit from the contractor and a review of the home or space. A heating and cooling load will need to be done on the home to determine the correct size of the system. Included in the contractor's review should be an analysis of the energy savings from the various heat pump systems, including any possible rebates, incentives, or tax credits. Check out our industry-leading estimating spreadsheets for HVAC sheet metal and piping, plumbing, combo HVAC and plumbing, or residential HVAC and plumbing at www.mepacademy.com. If you like that video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.